In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the slow-mo ease. It's unique in that it literally combines three eases into one. In its simplest form, a slow-mo ease is going to start fast, move in a linear constant rate, and then go fast at the end. And it's configurable, so it has a lot of options to get a wide range of effects. Before we get into building a project with slow-mo ease, let me show you how it works using the GreenSock Ease Visualizer. So, starting in the GreenSock docs, you're just going to go to the left nav and click on Eases, and that's going to take us to the GreenSock Ease Visualizer. This should all be very familiar to you from GSAP3 Express. I'm just going to zoom out a touch. There we go, so that we can see the entire Ease Visualizer here. Now, I explained in GSAP3 Express that whenever you see a steep curve, it means the animation is going to play quicker because there is a quicker rate of change over time. And wherever it flattens out, that means the animation is going to go slower. So keeping that in mind, let's click on slow over here, okay? Which is short for slow-mo. And you'll see a very interesting ease curve here. Well, if we just take what I've told you before about steep means fast, you're going to see that this ease starts out with a very big rate of change in the beginning. And then where you have this straight line, there's no curve at all. That means there's going to be a linear animation, meaning that the rate of change is going to be constant. And then where we have this curve right here, it's going to gradually speed up. So what we have here is literally three eases being merged into one. We start fast and ease out to a linear ease, and then we ease in towards the end and speed up. So let's run this animation. Keep your eye on the ball, haha. -ha. And you're gonna see it starts fast, goes linear, and then speeds up at the end. So the slow-mo ease is configurable in that it allows us to change what percentage of the ease is going to be linear, how strong the curve is going to be, and whether or not it brings us back to the starting value. So let's go through these things. In the bottom here, you'll see that I have three parameters. The first is for the linear portion of the ease. So right now at 0.7, it literally means it's going to be linear acceleration for 70% of the animation. So let me just change that over to 0.1 and then you'll see that it's linear for just a very small part, okay? So when I run this, it's gonna start fast, go constant for just a little bit, and then speed up. If I change this number to 0 0.9, you're going to see that it's linear for most of the ease, and it has these like sort of jumps at the beginning and the end. So here it's gonna start, boom, super fast, go linear, boom, on the way out. I usually have the linear, I don't know, it really depends on the effect, but let's just make it, 50% uh, for now. So half of the time is going to be spent going at a constant rate. The next parameter here refers to the strength of the curve. And the official name of this parameter is power. So at 0.7, it's sort of moderate. If I bring it down to 0.1, you'll see that you hardly see any curve at all. And, and there's om it's almost imperceptible the amount of change between the ease out at the beginning and the linear portion here. So um, let's go to something like 0.7, and there we have a nice smooth curve. Now what's interesting about the power value is that if I set it to exactly 1, you'll see that there's no change right here. So with a strength of 1, during the linear portion, there's no motion. So it's almost like a go, stop, and then go again. That can actually be useful. But what I want to show you that's really cool is that when we go beyond 1 to 2, you get really cool result here. What is that? Notice that here, the curve is going back towards the starting value. So the ball is going to move up, come back down for the linear portion, and then zoom out. And that is really uh, part of the trick of one of the effects that I'm going to be showing you in a future video. The next parameter here is referred to as yo-yo mode. Let me just go back to 0 0.7 here. So most of the time, this is how you're gonna be using a slow-mo ease. You're gonna start fast, go into linear, and then speed up again at the end. Now, if I change yo-yo mode to true, check out what happens. We return back to the starting value. So during the linear portion, 
we're going to be at the end value and then we're going to come back down to the beginning value. It operates like a single tween that has repeat set to one and yo-yo set to true. And so this gives us something very interesting. We have a tween that literally ends where it begins. I'm going to change the linear portion here to something very low. And so now it's only going to stay up there for a little bit before coming back down. So as you can see, with these three parameters, there's a virtually limitless amount of ways to configure this slow-mo ease to get wildly drastic results. In order to use slow-mo ease, you need to load it in addition to GSAP. So on the docs homepage, where I've shown you that GSAP 3 overview, you'll see that there are extra eases, and there's something called Ease Pack, which contains rough, slow, and expo scale. So what I'm gonna do is just copy that CDN URL, and then you can paste that into code pen or use it inside of a script tag. So in the next videos, I'm going to show you how to combine simultaneous slow-mo eases on the same object to get some really awesome effects. But before we do that, why don't you head on over to the Green Sock Docs and play around with the ease visualizer with the slow-mo ease. If you enjoyed this video, want to learn more about slow-mo ease, rough ease, and you want to build the cool projects I showed you, check out my mini course, GSAP3 Special Eases. I'll show you how to apply the slow-mo and rough ease to really cool projects. Check out the description below for more details.